I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man is Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in a break room with my co-host, Josh Accardo. Edward. What's up, buddy? How, How are, are you, you, pal? I'm well. Thank you. Good, good. Uh, today, our guest has a really funny podcast called Sad Money Podcast. He's a really funny comedian as well. Help me welcome Alex Payne to the show. Alex, what is your worst day job? My worst day job was I used to work for a thing called Assurance Wireless. <laughs> You've heard of this. Assuron? Assuron? That's no, 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 no. It's, it's something different. Assurance? That's yeah. A R N C. It was basically like a subsidiary of AT&T. And it was when I first got here to New York. It was one of those Craigslist jobs. And um, what the job was, you would go to human resource assistance offices. You guys know what these are? HRAs? <laughs> Basically yeah. welfare offices. Okay. Oh, okay. And you would go and you would sign people up for, uh, they called them Obama phones. This is when Obama was in yeah. office. And uh, <laughs> so essentially. It already sounds like a scam. <laughs> it was, it, what it was, was it was like AT&T, whatever, assurance would get like billions of dollars. That's how they get tax cuts. Yeah. By giving out these free like two hundred dollar phones, mm -hmm. like two hundred minutes or something like that, and they're the piece of crap like yeah. old brick phones, and um, they would give it out for free. But like it was a horrible job because I moved from South Central Los Angeles to New York, and the first job I had sent me to every hood in New York. Uh. It's like a hey, uh, you so think I your hood's bad? <laughs> yeah, it was like We're sending you to the Brownsville tomorrow. Yeah. I did go to Brownsville. I went to Brownsville. I went to the pink houses. Because I'm from, I'm a Southern California guy. I'm by yeah. no means from a neighborhood as, as tough as South, yeah. you know, the, the, the South side of Los Angeles or anything like that, but South Central. But uh, it's a different kind of thing going on here. Yeah. Here in New York, right? it's like, uh, you know, at least we have nice lawns. Like, yeah, you oh, can still right. have a lawn yeah. and yeah, live yeah, in the yeah, hood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You live in Inglewood and have a great backyard, yeah. but it's behind all these gates that you've built so no one fucks your shit. Exactly. And you come here and you see like these towers of, yeah. of just like, this is like Judge Dredd. You got to go yeah. in, right? Yeah. And you got to sell, you got to like, here, if they have to qualify, so you, you have to like fill up paperwork or something to get the phone? Or? They, so this is what's crazy. They gave us iPads to walk around the hood with. So here's a walk. <laughs> So I've I've like the only I, yeah Marcy Projects oh dude yeah Marcy Projects you walk around with a five hundred dollar iPad yeah yeah and we're dressed in suits uh, I don't know so you can't even you can't even fight in a suit you know what I mean? you're no. slipping and sliding and Plus, I, who's fight you're not fighting for AT and T no like, no no but I'm just saying if like you know somebody there was only I think one guy that wanted to fight me but let's say in the Bronx how many iPads a week were they like losing. I mean, uh, that, they would lose a lot. I yeah, guess they didn't. Yeah. They didn't try me as much because I'm pretty big. Yeah. But they, they, if they were women, they would send them to the hood too. So they would steal a lot of their stuff. Crazy. And I mean, I've been Avenue X, uh, you know, Coney Island. I've been Staten Island's hoods. I've been, the, I've just like I said, a New York World tour. What time in the day of hoods? Uh, it would go from you had to be at the office by eight, so I had to get up at six, and you would end at. That's the one saving grace. If six. it's day, you might be lucky yeah, yeah, yeah but like if it's like it would be like a at week day oh five we, is yeah, like, like, especially like in the winter it starts getting dark yeah yeah a little bit yeah right yeah i had a buddy in the bronx who was openly telling me that yo whenever there's like a starbucks that goes up we fucking throw a trash can through the window we try to light it on fire yeah. so imagine someone in a suit with an ipad coming <laughs> into your hood that just must be like a Everyone in the project knows, like, let's... Yeah. Because even in my neighborhood, we knew when, like, there was a mark. Like, you would know, like, oh, fuck. That's... Something's about to happen. Like, you just knew, like, oh, okay. So here was the saving grace. <laughs> I, I I would think the same way. I'm like, why, aren't, why isn't everyone trying to rob us? And I remember I was talking to this girl. I was like, um, you know, like, you know, we're out here. Why come, how come no one's trying to rob us? And she's like, I'm going to be honest with you. We thought you guys were feds. Like we thought you guys, oh, were, yeah. we thought you guys were murder police. Oh, shit! Like, asking, like undercover. No, or, just, oh, just flat out detectives. Yeah, like okay. people think maybe that's why they put you in a suit. Yeah, yeah. But, no, that's not why. I just did it for corporate or whatever reasons. <laughs> like out of touch people that are yeah. running this whole process for you. So like anytime they see a guy in the hood with a suit, they're like, he must be asking yeah. about a murder. Yeah. yeah. Right. So 
that was the only reason I think a lot of us didn't get tried because we would go up to people and be like, "Hey, can we talk to you real quick?" And yeah. they'd be like, "No, nah, we we good, man. We good. We good." You just want to hand yeah. up, but you don't have the goods on you. You just have to sign them up. The no, but we have a five hundred dollar iPad. Yeah, that's what this. I mean. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But no, we never had the phone on. That's so. Let me ask you this: Before, like, uh, so when did you realize this is? You're like uh, your path of like I gotta go to all the hood spots. Like the first day where you just like, oh, this is gonna be a great job, and then you show up, and you're like, I'm in Brownsville. Well, he doesn't think it's a great job. It's a Craigslist job. I'm trying to think when I first figured out where I was like, what the fuck is it? Uh, because they don't advertise. They they don't tell you. There's, that's not no, an annual. They we don't send tell you to that. all the projects of New York City. No, they don't. They yeah. don't tell you that at all. Uh, I think. <laughs> When did I figure that out? I want to say that van and they just fucking open the door. <laughs> like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What am I doing? And you just hear that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta remember when I first get here, I don't know what Brownsville is. Right, no, exactly. that's what I mean. When I right. moved here, I, I was total what, culture yeah, shock and stuff like no that. Idea. So I ended up in Spanish Harlem. I I, I saw a car yeah. on fire. Yeah. And no one was doing anything about it. Yeah. I, I'm like, what? What the fuck is going What's on? What's funny is I lived in South Williamsburg back in like. 2001 mm -hmm. and there was cars that would be on fire and i was living in south philly at the time like i didn't it wasn't even odd to me <laughs> <laughs> like, oh nick's must have won i moved from here yeah, method right. acting to get here and staying in a shitty day. so cars on fire yep check got that feel like home had that on my bingo card today <laughs> i don't know i'm trying to think the word. first time i don't know there was a lot of stuff that happened that made me go where am i i think brownsville Two o'clock on a Saturday, I'll never forget. Like, cause you know here it's not like LA. The cops are on the street, yeah, yeah. like Grand Theft Auto yeah. or something. Like, yeah. They're just walking around, <laughs> and they have those towers where they like record everything. And I just remember it was two o'clock, and then I just started hearing gunshots, and I was like, "They shooting at two o'clock, yeah. and the cops are on the street." I was like, "What kind of ignorant shit is this?" Yeah, it just it's the the don't give a fuckery. Yeah, it was cr it was insane. It's it on was another level. Wild, and that's when I remember being like, "I gotta get out of this job." I think I did it for like. <laughs> <laughs> Two more months after that, but I was like, hey, now let me ask you this too. Do you think that assurance they this is called they, AT and T? AT and T. Do you think they chose you to go to these locations because you're a black guy? Well, it's, it's no, there were there was there were some sending, white people. They were sending white people in. Yeah, it was yeah. crazy. It was wild. Like now that I think about it, that there were like women doing this job, I go, that's insane. It's but a then free phone. Them. You gotta go to yeah. places where there's poverty. Yeah, you oh, can't right. qualify for the phone unless yeah. you make under a certain uh, amount. So that's yeah. where you gotta go. Oh, so that's what it was. That was yeah, it Obama free phones. phones. Obama yeah. was giving yeah. out phones, and so, that's the tax break they get for that. Exactly. Yeah. So it's called the Obama phone because he was in office then. But the program has started in the '80s with Ronald Reagan. Oh, it doesn't sound the same with Reagan phones. No, but no. it used yeah. to be a landline, and then we got to cell phones. And then now it's probably a, a Biden phone. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. But it it has been updated since. I started doing research because, you yeah. know, every time you try and give a someone something free in the hood, they'd be like, man, that's, the government can track yeah. you with that. <laughs> you know, you got to stop. Like, nigga, every phone got GPS. The government can track you any way they Everyone's want. Everyone's like a, yeah. a hybrid lawyer, like a yeah. half-baked lawyer. That's that some know bullshit. There. They trying yeah. to track us. Yeah, man. I'm like, it's got like a two, degree of truth to it. 200 minutes on this phone, sir. Do you have a phone now? Does it have GPS? Then you're trackable. <laughs> I remember when I said that to him, I was like, wait a minute, he might kill me. Why am I yeah, fighting I know. This? <laughs> it's like you want to claim, you're like, I'm going to cure this ignorance. You're like, well, hold on. I'm not in a safe environment here. Yeah. I don't need to win this I'm argument. I'm not on stage right now and being all not. witty and pithy. I don't know. What it, I don't, that, that was Harlem, I think. That was, Harlem's hoods are nicer. The Bronx is For the sure. worst I think I've ever been Bronx, to. Bronx yeah. tough. Even with the shooting in Brownsville, I met some nice people in Brownsville uh, the Bronx was like I don't I don't want to come back here again. Wow! And you don't have to go far too. If you just go up, I think I says west from Yankee Stadium yeah. where the courthouse oh, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. You don't even have to go no, far. No, no, I don't know much about the Bronx. Bronx is oh, tough, dude. Brooklyn, That's I've been yeah. all over. I like I because I used to live there and I was. But like, what he's saying is right. Like Brownsville, you know, they do have people that just stayed in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. I just have been here my totally. whole life and I'm not leaving. I know, you know, whatever. But I feel like. Bronx is a tough. I spot. felt comfortable in Brooklyn, like because I used to go out. I mean, before Bushwick was Bushwick, yeah, but, but I used like to a go by. CD underbelly guy at that time in your life. Totally, you're like yeah. Ready Rock. Yeah, that's what I mean. So you're like guys. part of the game. Yeah, right. <laughs> Part of the I mean, game. you're oh, not like good. a guy going to a nine to five and then going no. to your apartment in Brownsville. I used <laughs> you're, to like go, fucking, you're in the mix. I used to go to the strip club out there, and it was run. It was just Puerto Rican drug dealer ran it, and it was just you know 
the, the saddest strip club. It's now nice, I think. It's called Punks. Oh, oh I haven't yeah, been to Punks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now it's all white people. Yeah, that go now it's all white yeah. people. It's like tattooed white girls. I and... used to go in and I'd be just just cracked out. And the guy goes, ah, oh, here he is. This kid's like, <laughs> he goes, yo, this guy, no, he's all right, he's all right. He's yeah. like on acid or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you end up in a titty bar. <laughs> Any dollar in your pocket's going to the rock and you um, end up in the titty bar? Oh, yeah. I'm just like talking the stripper's <laughs> ear off. She's like, oh, my God, this guy sucks. <laughs> no money for a lap dance? <laughs> Full nudity? No. No, they had no, bottoms they on. Alcohol there. They had right. bottoms on. Got to ask. Yeah. yeah well, There's nothing more disappointing. The important, the important thing. Queens yeah. has the full nudity, though. There's yeah, they spot, do. There's spots over here in Queens that has. On Steinway. Nudity. I think you get off Steinway Street. There's a strip club. Someone always gets shot there. Well, though. episode over, guys. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we picked this up. Pick this over. Pick this back up at the strip club. Yeah, no. There's a place over there. It's like, uh, but it's an underground. Oh, like Riviera. It's, they don't have signs out front. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. That's what I'm saying. Oh, someone always gets shot over there. That, mm, that's why I don't. Yeah. No, you don't go into yeah. those fucking mm. places. Mm. I mean, like was, uh, Bronx used to be Sin City. Then yeah. Sin City got shut down. Now it's just called like Gentleman. Yeah. You see right off the highway. Like when oh, yeah. yeah. Gentlemen? That's it's, what it's called? Something like that. That's it's like hilarious. the most random gentlemen. name. <laughs> it's the wrong. It's, the most yeah. it's like plural in the it's wrong just way. Gentleman yeah. Club. Or like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Club. But uh, Sin City was the shit. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. dude. That's when Sin City was making into it like 06, 07, 08, mm. making in a ton of rap songs. Ah. And a buddy of mine was this like legit Puerto Rican dude from the Bronx. So uh -huh. he took us. And that was the first time. I've been to a strip club that openly the women were like, like my buddy was like the shy white kid. And we got him a dance because he was leaving town and moving to another city. And this big booty girl just told him like, you better start feeling my ass. Like you're paying me. Yeah. Like, it was like, you better feel this ass. Yeah. It was unbelievable. <laughs> it's, nice. It was the first place so I great. ever saw like the booty clap perfected. Yeah. yeah. Like people had been doing it, but it was, yeah. I saw like, yeah. It's like seeing fucking Jimi Hendrix for the first time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Monterey Pop Festival. Yeah. Jimi Hendrix experience, dude. Start you just get out of the army. Team. I don't know what it is. Charisma. But kid, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> you ever been a bouncer? Have I ever been a bouncer? Yeah. Hell no. No, okay. no, no. I mean, no. You're but a big dude. Though. Yeah, I am, I but like, cause... I'm only intimidating to white people. <laughs> But to everyone else, they're like, I'll kill this. Are you kidding me? I can fucking fuck him up. No, 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 no. I've never but been a bouncer. Being a bouncer is like one of those jobs. Like if you can't, if you if you can't get a like a waiter job or a bartender job, yeah. And you're like you look like you could, you're big enough to look intimidating. Well, it's Not be, like a big bar, but like just a regular it's bar. Be an easy enough job though, like right? You just do that. It depends. I think the the hardest part is not actually guys; it's women that are drunk. Uh, that situation, uh, I've seen that a lot where the guys, like, you can't just pick her up and throw her on her head. No, right? It's like, that's a tough situation to do. I think with. you, honestly, I I knew bouncers that that was the one part about being a bouncer they liked is that throwing them? Just fucking annihilating people. people. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like because the cops right. are in cahoots with them. Yeah. And all they got to say is, this fucker started a fight in the club and yeah. that happened in the fight. Even if the guy's like, dude, they just beat the shit out of me. Right. Then. They could beat your ass yeah. inside the club, and then they throw you in the street, and the cops just take you to the drunk tank. It's yeah, the the venue always has the and the cops the, love it. They're like, great, now we don't have to beat this dude's ass. <laughs> yeah, he's already fucked up. We yeah. throw him in the drunk tank. The drunk tank. I, I've known a lot of people in the drunk tank. Thank God I have not had to make that trip, but I know a lot of people that have. That might be low key the worst nightmare situation for a, a night of your life. Yeah, you've, you've been drunk tanked, right? I'd be drunk tech, but not in a city. Imagine you're with people who are the drunkest they've ever been. Yeah. And now they're at like that part where the shit's hitting the fan for them. They're puking. They're fucking losing it in there. And now they're like, and we're going to lock the door. Uh -huh. <laughs> and now I'm going to lock you in a room with these motherfuckers. That is insanely terrifying to me. Well, that's what they always say. Like the county, like if you have to county, go to county, yeah. that's always worse than like actual jail or yes. prison. like the county is just it's mayhem because no it's so transitory yeah you know what i mean it's, it's yeah they, they, nobody care those guards don't care yeah go ahead do it just yeah i don't want to kill it don't kill anybody seriously <laughs> yeah. you guys have fun don't kill it, anybody yeah. i would not want to be in county <laughs> Yeah, I'm lucky. You ever been in county, Alex? <laughs> I know a couple guys around. No, I've grown up around. I, there's the towers in Inglewood. 
They yeah, had those, yeah. But no, I never went to. I don't know. They so where are you from in LA? You from South Central? I'm from South Central, but I grew up first Normandy and Western. Then we moved to Inglewood, and Inglewood has that jail right in the middle of yeah. Inglewood, right next to the library. They're like, look, you got a choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> library, you gonna go to this jail? There's Which city these block. Things fit. Yeah, <laughs> they're city block away from each other, and they look alike too. Honestly, <laughs> they really do. You can get lost and be like, oh wait. <laughs> and then we moved back to uh, Crenshaw and Slauson when I was like. 10, 11 or something like that. So why'd you move to New York? Like, So here's being in Southern California. I moved in 006. Yeah. And at the time, there just was not a lot of opportunities for solely stand-up in the LA area. It was like mm-hmm. two or three clubs. And then a lot of the time during that period, you weren't allow- allowed to work one or the other. It was like either you worked the comedy store, you worked the improv, or you worked the factory. And it was like, okay, well, I just wanted to be a stand-up. It was before you could kind of visualize yourself being on camera regularly yeah uh so i'm like i'll move to new york because i knew a guy and he helped get me up here and i thought wow now i could actually start working fairly soon and blah 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 yeah but now if i had to make that decision i might stay in la i don't know so what was your process uh i would go to the store and hang out a lot i i had moved here first but when i when i had the choice between staying and going i remember watching the comedians that were like uh in la and then watching some of the comedians that were over there and it was like i knew no matter what on the back end of this you could probably get famous obviously in la faster i would get famous that's like kind of guaranteed i think almost there a little bit but i couldn't get good at it mm-hmm. like i had seen every comedian that was really good and they were all from new york yeah, yeah. That's cool. and i knew like you only have one time to go to new york in your life mm-hmm. Cause like you don't want to be fifty moving here and like trying to figure it no. out and no, no. you know and then that's when I realized I was like well I might as well just go ahead and try and actually get good at this yeah because you can always get famous but you can't always I mean I don't that's even know if I want to anymore that's but an I, interesting yeah thing, you can always get famous you can't always get good yeah you there's only a certain amount of time you can really get good and, I'll, and I have friends that are like doing really well now they're TV shows all kind of stuff mm-hmm. but like. They can't get good at stand up again because once you're on that path, yeah, of, you get people give you a car blanche. Yeah, you know, you much, walk in, you're on TV. I recognize you. Yeah, yeah. much mm-hmm. much easier. Yeah, and then I know people who moved later. They like did L. A. for a little bit, and then like, oh, I want to come to New York, and then they come here and they go, this is too hard. Yeah, you, you gotta have a lot of like piss and vinegar. I, I couldn't move here at 43. I'm 43 now. I moved here when I was 26, and I was like, yeah. this is exactly what I wanted. That was 26 year old energy. Yeah, it was. You know. Uh, Horrible. I mean, I slept on my clothes when I first got here. Yeah, yeah. That was. I had an air mattress. It popped, and what, then I just got a room clothes. on Craigslist. My cousin. Your moved whole life here. you go to Craigslist. Is that what you're yeah, telling us right that now? That would be crazy. <laughs> I wouldn't have moved. My cousin moved here first. And he followed his now fiance, then girlfriend, and he was like, "Do you want to go?" And I was like, "All right, I'll go." You know, I gotta get on my mom's house anyways. Like yeah, twenty four something like that. And then I went, and I'm not gonna lie, worst experience of my life was moving here. Really? Oh my god, it was hell. It was like. Yeah. I'm just dropped in the middle of New York City. It's so funny. I slept on an air mattress my first night here. Yeah. That just must be the thing. Yeah, everyone. <laughs> and it was like, somebody. No one has a bad ever. <laughs> yeah, borrowed air mattress. And then I eventually got enough money. Why'd you hate it, though? When I first got here? Yeah, what was the, why was the worst experience? Name a couple of things that you were like. Well, assurance wireless. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> job. Beyond <laughs> that, my cousin was like with his girlfriend, so I didn't have any friends. Yeah. And then my other You already roommate, were doing stand-up at that point. At, I had started stand up because my I was like going to the show at the Three of Cups. I don't know if you guys remember uh, yeah, this. I remember Three of Cups. Yeah, R- I remember the mic. R J Berger, I think was his name. Okay. He used to have a show, and the host. I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was the worst host I've ever seen in my whole entire life. And now you're a he's comedy like, fan then, and you're just like, I want to get out of the house. I don't. I want. I, I love stand up, but I didn't know it was like, oh, I can go do this. But I would watch like the comedians on the show, and then I would be like. I'm not gonna lie. The host now is very famous. He's very successful. He's doing really well. Yeah. And he proved to me anybody can get better at this. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was Tim Dillon, and I was like, "This is oh, the wow. worst oh, I've whoa. ever seen." Oh wow. Really? Is, yeah. By far the worst comedian I'd ever seen. Where I was like, every week he would host, and I'd be like, "This guy's not getting any better." Damn. And he would host for like Michelle Wolf, Michael Che, Damian Lemon. Remember he was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Shane Fowler. Yeah. Adam Newman. So I was seeing like those people, and then again, Tim Dillon was like. He was nobody. He was like, I'm a tour guide. You know, I, I have a body of a cop. And my friend who was like, 
he's one of the funniest people I've ever met, but he's like an airhead kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would say, like, so he would always do crowd work to us. Like, I guess he never realized we were the same two black guys. And he would just be like, <laughs> where are you from? My friend was like, uh, I'm half black, half white, like a pineapple. He just says weird <laughs> shit like that. And then Tim Dillon was like, I don't know. What is he talking about? And I was seeing that and I was like, I think I could do this. This guy's pretty. That's so funny. He's pretty ass. Now he's he's huge. He's yeah, famous. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, is the biggest yeah. community. He's gotten like amazing. Yeah, yeah. It. Versus when I first saw him, I was like, oh, this is a trajectory of. That's a right. crazy story that you were inspired by somebody because you thought they made it look so doable because of how bad they were. They were and now so they're bad, massive. Yeah. I think that's what, that's, that's, that's how it. we inspire people. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You go like, I can do it's this. Like, honestly, the worst like insult I can get after a set is somebody coming up is, yeah, you know, I've always wanted to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shut up. I know I haven't Fuck done my up. job if this <laughs> yeah. guy thinks he can do it. <laughs> exactly. But also now he's like huge. And he's oh, no, I mean, I think he's really yeah. funny, but yeah. yeah. That's, but yeah. This was years. When this you're just like, starting, I know a lot of people that develop at different points in their career, right? For but sure. You're seeing someone just like working their, sh like trying to find their voice every night at this like almost open mic-esque book show. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, there's no harm in that and saying like, hey, dude, that shit was rough. <laughs> obviously, it worked out for you. Well, there's a lot of comics you see because... Uh, it's funny when you see somebody and they're like, oh, dude, you got good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it happens uh, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah it's, it is good. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were here and then you moved back because I think I met you yeah. when you moved back here the second time. Right? Yeah, I was going back and forth. My grandmother was like in the position of having to be put in a home. She was uh -huh. like having dementia and stuff like that. So we were. I was going back and forth to take care of her. But I still had an apartment here always because I was still paying rent here. But... um. Oh, yeah, that was like spot. was. I mean, it's pretty nice. At your cousin's yeah, spot, yeah, yeah. Your and uh, Bushwick, Halsey, L. Oh, Halsey, yeah, Halsey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had got it right before it got really gentrified. This was like when they were still like beating white girls up off when they got uh -huh. on the train and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And then right after that, it started to become. Yeah, now it's it's now it's more. It's uh, great. Yeah, it's wild. I mean, you know, depends on who you ask, but <laughs> <laughs> blows me away. Yeah, it's insane now. When you go back, you're like, what? I Crazy. Can't, yeah, this is. I feel safe. Yeah, like the in between, like South Williamsburg. It's funny that South Williamsburg is m actually more dangerous than Bushwick now. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, the, yeah, I mean, I guess closer to the J. That's what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I agree with that, thousand percent. Have you ever I, had a big comedy moment and then had to go to a day job? Uh, like a yeah. giant moment, and then you had to show up to a day job after it. Yeah. What was it? What like what was the moment and what was the job? Yeah, this is big to me. But it was, um, I did this show in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. This place called, this theater called Throck Morton. Okay. And uh, it was a theater Robin Williams built. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. And like, Robin Williams is one of the oh, best insane. comedians of all time. Most talented people of all time. And so like, I don't know, it's just doing the show like that and they paid like $300. $300. Yeah, it's huge. Because Marin County is all rich people. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. richest people. Uh -huh. And then having to like, I think, this was... January 2020, Kobe died like a day after. Oh, shit. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then, like, coming back home, and then I had to work, and then COVID started. That was like. Oh, it, that's right. That was a. It was frame. like a, just yeah. a crazy chain of events where I was like, man, I'm, a, I'm making it. Uh. I'm going to do this. I performed the same place Robin Williams performed. My life's changing, and then having to go back. And, what was the job at the time? Ooh, what was the job back then? Cause I'm, I'm, you know, I get fired all the time. I'm trying yeah, to Ace Hardware, Ace Hardware, yeah. Ace Hardware. Nice. Yeah. you know, I didn't get fired from Ace. What I just never the counter. No, no, no. I, I used to. What did I do at Ace Hardware? Mix paint. And then I used. I've to always work wanted to the, do that. Mix, mix paint? paint. Just not as a job, but I, I like to put the paint in the machine. Uh, press the it. button. That's a. That is. I'm getting anxiety thinking about You've that. You done thing. shit like that? No, mix and paint. I'm bad with colors, dude. Oh. I don't know. The You're machine does blind, it. You psycho. Yeah. yeah, the machine. Oh, you are. Yeah. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a, the thing I would say <laughs> no, about. Ace somebody goes beige. I'm just like, I don't oh, know beige. I got it. This is worse. This is worse. Forget that. I worked at Ace Hardware on West Fourth, across the street from the cellar. Oh. For like a year or two. So I would see it's comedians come in. I would see people who worked at the cellar come in. Mm -hmm. And I would that would be my dream every day. I'm staring across at the cellar. Yeah. Oh, the fat black on uh, fat black. black. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah sometimes yeah. I'd even have to make deliveries to like Cafe Reggio, <laughs> and I just kind of look around. I never forget. Are you wearing an apron. I'm wearing an Ace Hardware. 
<laughs> Ace Hardware uh, shirt, like a sweater. Guy they would cast in the Ace Hardware ad. Like, this yeah, is a diverse guy. People would be singing the songs <laughs> to me. They'd be like, oh, Ace Hardware. I'd wear the like when I leave. I'd go to do New York. I'd be wearing the Ace Hardware clothes. And I remember one time, one girl. I think her name was Camille. She, we went so you out. were a you're a legacy over at Ace. Yeah, man. I was. They all knew too. They were so, like uh, our man from the. Upper north of Cali, a uh, it, chapter. It was crazy too because just transferred over from the Bronxville show. <laughs> <laughs> they all knew I wanted to do stand up, and they were like, "Oh, why don't you just ask uh, Liz? She runs the place over there." I'm like, "Well, you can't really." Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. in their mind, they're like, "I know her. She's great. I'll yeah, just yeah. ask her for you to let yeah. me." Then you ask her for a spot. That woman will hate your guts. Isn't that funny in stand up? You yeah. just know by the first year, like. Well, asking people for a spot and putting them on the spot to ask for a spot, they hate you for forever. Yeah. <laughs> so how do I uh, work here? Uh, comedy seller, it's called? Yeah. Is there a, like a list? That's or, what most people think. They go, just go and apply. Yeah. I remember I was doing mics, and uh, this girl, she went, she walked into the cellar like at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, uh -huh. walked in, and just started, was wandering around in the cellar, and then somebody goes, hey, what are you doing in here? She's like, oh, I'm... Looking for a mentor. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, you did what? <laughs> That's hilarious. You didn't give them your real name, did you? <laughs> I'll never forget. I was Ace Hardware opens at 10 a.m. on Sundays. And I was like, I was opening shift. And I remember going there and like, you know, pulling the shutters and everything to open it up. And at that time, I remember seeing like Greer Barn walk out of the cellar, and he'd have definitely been on the bender or whatever the yeah, night yeah, before. Yeah. And I remember thinking, man, I want that to be my life. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be drunk yeah. at seven a.m. <laughs> I mean, it was like he's he's leaving to go home, and I'm like coming here to yeah. like open up this stupid We're hardware all store. A price. <laughs> it's, but it yeah, you're right like, though. It's funny it how like you... such an opposite thing too, right? And I'm yeah, yeah. right across the street. I couldn't be closer. <laughs> so good. That's what was like. Oh, that hurts. Every day to have to go there and see Dave help David Tell get boxes, you know what I mean? <laughs> Why is it yeah, like now I just find it interesting that you kept saying that people keep coming in from the cellar at the Ace A lot of them. I've never wanted to run an errand while I'm going to a lot spot. of them. Jim Norton used to come in. Um, like the whole staff all came in. That's how I got to know them. The staff makes sense because, like, oh, we need tape or we need something for the office. David Tell's <laughs> going, David yeah, boxes. just you know, looking through boxes. <laughs> oh, this is a good box. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You think of them as just that, but I would see them come in it's like and be like, "Senior teacher out of school." Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Hey Bob, look at David Tell. Look at the boxes. Martin. How's this tape? Is this yeah. good tape? <laughs> the best is when you're like so enamored by, uh, like in your mind, this person's a celebrity. I'm not David Tell is a celebrity, but in general, me, like, yeah. as comics, we find ourselves like, oh, I really love this guy's stand up, and you kind of, and sometimes it's like a one off guy. Like Brian Regan for the longest time, no one knew who the fuck that guy was. Like That's the normal true. guy. Like you imagine being your ace hardware job, and you know Johnny next to you doesn't know shit from Shinola. You're like, there's Brian Regan. Look at him <laughs> looking at the measuring tapes. He's yeah. just stretching them out. Like it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey, there's David Tell. He's, yeah, his credit card was declined. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy comes in here all the time. He says the credit card never works. <laughs> I love how loving dudes that just do not have their lives together too. Like just in it. It's like. Like your story about uh so ed used to love this guy with a, a pot belly in his neighborhood he thought he was the coolest guy oh yeah, yeah. In the when whole I was, world when i was a kid i looked up to this these hoodlums that stood out in front of our uh and it, this guy he had this big gut and he was he's probably 18 and he would just strut up and down the block <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. His gut and i started doing that in the backyard <laughs> five years and old. i remember hearing my mom yell at my dad like look at him he looks like this <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> I remember I would take my jean jacket, throw it over my shoulder, and like fake hitchhike. Yeah. And my mom was like, "What is happening? We got to move out of this." this, this I was so like just in rebel without a clue. Oh, I, loved, out. I loved just dirt bags. I looked up to him. I mean, I think I think everyone in comedy kind of does. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, like, uh, I used to, so I lived next to drug dealers. I was thinking, like, man, I want to be a drug dealer. Yeah, oh, yeah you were yeah, destined yeah, for this yeah, life, yeah, my yeah. friend. I've hung out with drug dealers, and I've since realized I'm, I don't have the makeup of a drug dealer. Right. But I'm like, that was my dream. I remember was first it time. Was the freedom you're attracted to? I always tried the to money. Get... He gave me, like, $100 oh. to go to the store when you're, like, 12. Well, I'm trying to connect it That's to stand-up. Like, like, being into stand-up, I'm trying to figure out, like, so for me, it's the, like you're saying, the yeah. debauchery and the brokenness. Like, I relate. Yeah. And then there was this illusion of freedom and it yeah. wasn't until it became my business 
like my actual business where yeah. I have to make money today that I realized, oh shit, this is a fucking job. It's a job. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is a job. If you do not write your jokes, if you are not emailing constantly people to get up, if you're not trying to figure out how to build your audience, you I don't care how many clubs you're passed at, you fade away. Or you just work those clubs and hopefully pull together the 50 grand a year you're hoping to make at stand-up. And I used to treat it as if like, the minute you get the one thing, and oh, then you yeah, get the yeah, fucking, yeah. then it's all, you get it all. Yeah, and then yeah. you're on the road and you're banging trim. <laughs> that's my inner monologue that's, just, that's how my inner monologue his inner monologue is Andrew Dice Clay <laughs> yeah piece of shit oh <laughs> so I keep failing in life on the outside I'm fine it's my inner monologue he's fucking with me cause you think like I'm past at the cellar now what now bitches and you look at your check and you're like Okay, so that was five sets to the seller. Uh, that's about 340 bucks. I'm yeah. in the big time now. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. Mm -hmm. Still got to pay your fucking rent. Your $1,400 rent on the air mattress. You're fucked. Yeah. And that's why you should all kill yourselves, kitties. Well, so you live next to drug dealers. So the money thing, did you ever, uh, you never sold drugs? Uh, I mean, later in life, but not like, like I didn't sell crack. It was like people. Would, Those guys were selling rock. Yeah, they were dead for sure, hundred yeah, yeah, percent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was. This is how I know this guy was like a, a real drug dealer. I remember he had a pit bull, and his first of all, he would take a shirt off, and you could see the bullet holes where he was shot. Oh, but shit. he had a pit bull, oh, and like you know, a lot of people had pit bulls, but he could yell at his dog, and his dog would just do whatever he said. Yeah, he owned and I it. go, this motherfucker, he's <laughs> definitely killing somebody. Oh yeah, oh, like yeah, he had yeah. that thing where another animal was like, he didn't hit his dog. He would just yell. Like yeah, the dog his would voice be like, was enough to scare the shit out of the dog. I would hear it from the next door, and I'd be like, oh, shit, what was yeah. that? <laughs> and that's why I was like, oh, yeah. His, he was nice, though. His name is Peanut. He gave us like $100. Were you and kid? I remember, I was a kid, like 10, oh, 12 years old. Oh, South Central, okay. Yeah, so like he gave us $100, and then to go to the liquor store, and he'd be on the phone. And, you know, when you're a kid, what can you buy? You can buy like, what, $10 worth of you stuff? You have bubble gum? Snapple, you know, let's, yeah. let's just be Doritos. Honest. Yeah, like, you know, well, we're black, so hot chips. Hot like, chips. <laughs> what you know, the hot chips? The flaming hot, hot Cheetos? Flaming hot Cheetos. Yeah. Like, you can only, maybe Funyuns, you get yeah, some yeah. of that. Funyuns, and then you yeah. come back and you got the change. And I'll never forget, like, we tried to give him his change back. And he was on the phone. He looked at me. He was like, what the shit? I was like, yeah. oh, my God. Yeah. Well, like, I want to be a drug dealer. It's yeah, genius, yeah, yeah. though, because that's, like, the way you recruit your people. It's like, now he knows... For that, like eighty bucks that you have in your pocket, if you oh, see yeah. cops, if you see people trying to steal his shit, he has a kid. Yeah, saying, mm -hmm. "Yo, look, you know, I saw eyes on the street." You, yeah, seriously, yeah. 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 He moved away. I miss him. <laughs> he got, did. He get out of the. He got out of the life. <laughs> I don't think no. The way <laughs> Those he guys was, are in there forever. <laughs> yeah, the way he was like, you got to be addicted to that kind of money. That yeah, kind of yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. And yeah. it's the way you're living too. It's it's like stand up. It's an addiction. Like, we haven't been on the road. I haven't been on the road in like three months, and we're going we're going back on the road. Uh, we're playing Houston, the Megaton Brewery, May 10th, Friday. This is going to air right before. Yeah, and yeah. I'm telling you, I cannot wait oh, to dude. just be back out on the road. Right. Yeah. And it's not f fun. Yeah. I mean, it's fun, but it's not like – it's work. It is work. But, yeah. man, I love being on the airplane. I love – fucking being on the road and like figuring out how to solve some kind of dipshit problem you're dealing with i just i'm missing it now talk to me may 12th yeah i'll probably be irritated but yeah, because you they, the the hotel doesn't have an iron this guy's <laughs> iron in his pants We're in a hotel. hey man I, I grew up in dog shit i'd fucking iron my clothes in the patches of weeds i'm from and yeah I, I gotta show up looking like i don't live in shit it's yeah, like a thing yeah, yeah. inside of me yeah yeah no I, I respect i yeah i'm just like i I was thinking about uh, I have this hoodie, man. I, it's starting to fall apart. It's like my favorite hoodie. I mean, you know which one? Yeah, the blue I know, one. I, I took it off today. Yeah, yeah, I but I, <laughs> you're like I wear it every day. Uh, it's in my headshots. Like yeah. I'm just like I don't know what to do. I gotta go get a new one. Like I'm like kind of bummed. Asking bad. Alex to come huh? all the way for a podcast. How bad? How bad is it? It's okay, it, but it's starting to fray here. So I think it's you like, gotta keep it, man. Yeah, yeah, keep it, rock it. <laughs> There's nothing more funny than a guy that looks like shit on stage. <laughs> like you see someone, you go, oh "My God, he looks horrible." Yeah. It's kind of funny to see someone that's like, "This is my best hoodie." <laughs> I feel so comfortable in it too. That's that's the thing. Like, I, I just and like it's not even like uh, I want to wear shitty clothes. I just yeah. feel so much more comfortable. Well, that's what I mean. It's like a blankie. Yeah. That's it why is. I'm saying yeah, yeah. get something new. Get something new. I okay, maybe because I grew up like 
OCD and kind of superstitious, and mm-hmm. I had to break myself for a lot of that. Whenever I see stuff like that, I'm like, fuck it, burn it, throw it out. Buy oh, something new. Go nah. for something new. Oh, you just made me give it. Yeah, I just see? got like a pang of anxiety. Yeah, I love it. No, I, I love flying without a parachute. See, I don't. Here's the other thing, though. I don't like buying. I don't like buying stuff. That's crazy you're, to yeah. me. Yeah. Well, it's, maybe it's because I'm black, but I'm like, yeah, I love buying. You like buying stuff? I, yeah, everything. I, I just bought these pants today. Yeah, those are nice. <laughs> <laughs> I love buying stuff. I don't like buying stuff. Yeah, my wife, my wife buys shoes. shit. It's just not. It's just nonstop buying. I'm like, yeah. You just keep bringing stuff into the house. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm not with that. No, I don't like. I don't like. I do just, you? How, do you have a job currently? Now are you all all comedy? No, half You're and half. Talking about spending money. L- half and half. I have a regular day job and then the other half comedy. So is it something you could see is it easy to work your job with, with stand up? That's uh, like the fucking dream. Yeah. The job I had before, which was a lot of traveling, which is like work for a photo booth company. That was pretty bad. Photo booth. And you couldn't book gigs yeah. in those cities cause you're just doing work and then you turn around and leaving, I would be right? Working like the night yeah. of or something like that. Yeah. But I got to go travel a lot and I got to see like, if this was your life, what this would be like. Sure. And my God, I was like, I don't think I could do this. This is crazy. Really? What's a yeah. photo booth company? Well, like for a big events? Yeah. So like, let's say you have a movie premiere and they're like, oh, we need someone to do the photo booth for the movie premiere. And you go gotcha. and set it up. And set it up. Oh, and, the vendor stuff. So you have to wear a suit for that? Um, They wanted you to, but I was like, you know, I'm in Cleveland. You don't know. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah. And. Um, Just wear a busted old hoodie. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Sometimes it, just wear all black, and I'm like, I, I'm not packing for this. Uh, I was like you. I would just be like, look, I'm here for three days. I'm about to eat like shit. I was I was eating like sushi in Cleveland, just crazy stuff. Yeah. I was like, what sushi like you're on taste vacation. Like Cleveland? That's, I, when I first started working the road, I used to treat it like a vacation because yeah. I was working a day job too, and I I spent more money than I made every yeah. time because I, dude, it's not a vacation. Yeah. Like you're at work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I oh, mean, they were they were sixty dollars per day per diem. Oh, per diem. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, okay, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. It yeah. was for sure they paid it, and then like you got like you know three hundred dollars a day for leaving the city or something. But like, yeah, I would say that for me, my problem is biggest problem is spending money on oh, clothes spending. and shoes. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, a thousand percent. Oh, he's all that money was gone. Too. Yeah, yeah. I'm Dude, yeah. he's got how many pairs of shoes? I you got, got a lot of shoes. I don't even know. You don't even want to say? Uh, not uh, not in publicly. <laughs> I understand. Wow, really? Uh, it, I understand. It, they're worth a lot of money. You know, I want people. Uh, hey, I fuck. Hey, I come. Wow. I come heavy. You, <laughs> 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 Cause I know I've man. Anyway, see, I got a lot of shoes. I got. I, I'm a shoe person. I have total, total. Like, and these are like shoes that have paint on them and stuff. Ten pairs of shoes, mm. including like nice pairs of shoes. Yeah. Church shoes, church shoes, all the boots, all the pairs all of the boots, boots I have. Most of them are boots. Ten pairs, have, tops. But you dress like a roadie. Four pairs. I do of dress boots. like a roadie. What would you even spend money on? Money is not your thing. I feel like I would spend money on a dinner. Yeah, food like is your thing. I kind of spend money. Yeah, that's where wow. I spend money. Okay, I'll totally drop. I love a good meal. Food. Yeah. That's yeah. insane to me. Yeah. See, see how you feel about food. That's yeah. how I feel about like I shoes. Knew. Every time I put them on, that's like a steak. See, here's the thing. So my thing is, then I gotta worry about them all the time. The food, it's gone. Yeah. It's so like it's just done. that is true. It's gone. If, I never have to like yeah. think about it. I have the same. I wear these shoes until they fall off my feet, and then I buy another pair. Yeah. And then that's it. That I don't have happen. to think about it. Yeah. I do wear if I wear certain shoes. People are like, oh, oh let's dude, go, we're go in, dance. We're in fucking Seattle. Yeah. Walking around Seattle, and he's like, oh, dude, I can't. I'm like, why don't you tie your shoes? He goes, you can't tie these shoes. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. Uh, in and all I was fairness, like, I was in like, all okay. fairness, <laughs> I'm not. We're walking through the wilderness, on an unknowing well, part of the trip happened. That, that and person I'm walking gave us, through a, a yeah. terrible, terrible place. That's not for me. Yeah, I'm not here to climb the hidden trails, my That's friend. True. Hey, I, I wasn't my idea to go on that. Uh, route. Yeah, that person fuck, gave us bad yeah, information. I got yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like, what's going on back there? You're in much better but shape I, than me. And he's like, I go, why are you tying your shoes? The shoes are falling <laughs> yeah. off my feet. Because <laughs> you you're not allowed to tie these. You, just, you don't tie no, these. No, you fucking pulling on the laces. You're fucking the shoe up. <laughs> it's not you don't want to crease them. It's not for that. You can't crease them, too. What do you got on now? These are Yeezy boots. Oh, okay. I'm a big, I like everything Yeezy. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
ever since the whole controversy, things have gotten cheaper. So. Yeah, nice. Uh, Seriously, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. smart. Yeah, yeah. Before uh, they, they went up for a second with uh-huh. a, a Nazi rise in the price. Oh. price. <laughs> and then now that he's back and he's like apologizes, they've gone drastically down oh, again. Oh, that's great. So, yeah, good for you. I've been a fan for a long time, so now I can afford everything. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy how that guy's uh, like legitimately part of the conversation with shoes. Oh, oh, yeah. Like oh yeah, they were bigger than Jordans, Jordans at one point. Were they really? Yeezys. Yeah, Yeezys were. He at one point his sales they out uh, sold to Jordans. I believe that though. I mean, Jordans have been the top shoe for how long? I mean, well, they're back gotta, now. I mean, it's back. all about yeah. like Jordans the, are back now. Oh yeah, so? it's about well, the retro releases. Make, if you have a yeah. good year of releases, they're gonna be back. So it's like right now he has like a partnership with Travis Scott. Yeah, a bunch of Travis Scott Jordan? stuff. Yeah, yeah. Travis Scott will That's design. That's because of Kanye. He'll, uh, yeah, he'll design yeah. Uh, different shoes for the Jordan brand. Once, so like stuff like that. Once Kanye had made shoes and gotten so successful, other companies were like, "Why don't we just get a rapper and make shoes with us?" And then they got Travis Scott, Puma got Rihanna, uh, okay. and everyone's looking for their. Yeah. Kind of, no one's going to be as good as him, obviously. But like Travis Scott is probably second. Uh, okay. After that. So it's an interesting world out there. Yeah, I don't know anything. Athletes about that. don't sell I wear, shoes. Anymore. I wear uh, no, they fucking really skateboard shoes, and I haven't ridden a skateboard. But it's your brand. Thirty years. <laughs> I used to wear skateboard shoes. Yeah. Uh, SB Dunks, Eric Coston, mm-hmm. oh uh, yeah, Paul yeah, Rodriguez. Yeah. I, I used to. La Caz, that's what I, I started with skateboard shoes, and I. And then you, oh, so you're saying I, you I have room to grow? Is what you're saying? For <laughs> sure. I mean, your style <laughs> is like California Silver Lake style oh okay the way yes. you dress is like some like you uh-huh. would kill it in silver lake not oh, that's point. funny I never thought of that. Yeah. yeah yeah he would he really would this style is yeah, an, yeah. you don't oh. seem like well, a silver New lake York used to be essays there. now yeah, 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 yeah. now it's over. yeah i know silver lake is what yeah essays live yeah I, yeah i don't know uh yeah i'm gonna be out there next week oh yeah. you are yeah i'm yeah, gonna go to silver lake i'm gonna hit go yeah. where, where are the essays <laughs> yeah <laughs> excuse me sir where yeah. are the essays uh here in silver lake <laughs> like that chick yeah. with the front mentor <laughs> go to, <laughs> excuse me i'm, I'm looking, looking for, for an essay mentor <laughs> that'd be funny <laughs> I wanted to be a Vato Loco. Yeah. Uh, anyone here help me out? Just wander, wander around Chavez Ravine. And... <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so what do you got coming up? Anything big you're working on? I feel like everyone has a special they're working on already. Uh, no, I don't have a special I'm working on. But um, we have our show live at the end that we do at the Music Inn. Oh, yeah. So cool. that's yeah. back now. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, we've been doing that for five years now. Yeah, so, they were, so the Music Inn, I don't know if you know the Music Inn. Mm-mm. It's down in... Uh, it's on bleaker right west That's village right. on west oh, fourth right right next to the ifc center oh yeah right yeah, around yeah, the corner yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. um very cool spot yeah it's the oldest music store in new york city and uh they used to shoot that show marvelous miss mazel yeah. there okay. and stuff like that so we do a show there every friday and saturday a stand-up show stand-up and music because it's music again so yeah, are you a musician do. I'm not, but the other guy, Steven Sahelnik, he plays the piano. Becky oh. plays uh, a lot of the musicians oh, on the show. We try and mix I love it. That. We try to do comedy with music. It's been, it's always been a cool scene down there. I yeah. gotta check that out, man. Yeah. I love yeah. that. You cool. should definitely come. Yeah. yeah, it's it's downstairs. They still got all the crazy lights and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, it's still going, yeah. and um, we do that. And I guess later this year, like you guys, I'm trying to leave. I, I don't really tour in the United States. I try to leave to go. Oh, okay. The, out of the states UK to, UK Canada Germany uh, what France made, do you speak German what, what made no, you do no that you just had a connection that uh, I just went like right after COVID because I was supposed to go 2020 everything's supposed to happen yeah. 2020 yeah, yeah. and then um, I was like oh, fuck it I'm just gonna go anyway a year later and then I ended up going and I I had friends that lived over there in the UK and I stayed mm-hmm. and then you know I didn't realize because again we grew up in America America's so big France is like, or Paris is like oh, two hours oh, it's away. A, it's a, it's on a like train. going to New it's Haven crazy. from here. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. You be in five different countries. Yeah. in an hour yeah. and a half. I love it. So wow. I started doing that, and then and uh, they want like New York City type they do. of comedy. They do. You know, they yeah. want, and they even they, yeah, like because I used to, I did a show in Paris, and it was like New York City comedy. Yeah, just that's how they sell it out there. It is interesting. Huh? Yeah, yeah cool. And it'd be awesome. You can't make any money. Yeah, you'd have to have a name to be able to sell tickets out there. But France you get doesn't. Spots. Did you make money when you when you were over there? I mean, you in France or London? Well, I don't know. Well, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, London for sure. London, I would say. I can see London. Yeah. Do you need a visa for that? I guess. I mean, you're supposed to have a oh, visa I if mean, you're you a get narc. Yeah, no, whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, PayPal. They do PayPal. They don't PayPal, even. They don't okay. even know what Venmo is. But uh, yeah, you can make money over there for sure. I would say you make more money there than you probably would here. Per right. spot, you mean? 
yeah, yeah, for sure. Like they pay like sometimes like a hundred pounds yeah, for be, twenty minutes. Yeah, because nice. they uh they have a lot of more they have a lot more budgetary situations sure. for the arts. Yeah, they actually they like, have fun. The government like, funds it. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah they yeah, like yeah. respect it. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's, an, it's, it's a life here, essential. It's like yeah, you're, you're fucking lucky. You're lucky. Yeah. The, the dude in Paris spot. was like, yeah, um, as long as I do, it was like the equivalent of one of us being on uh, like Fox 5 doing a segment. Yeah. Like if, as long as I do like 10 of those a year, yeah, they pay for like my medical. They give me a stipend. It's called like an artist yeah. stipend or something. Yeah, right, but right, right. His daughter was on the med. Like, I mean, he had a, a nice apartment. You're oh, like, wow. They really do value the arts here. That's for sure. Amazing. Yeah. It's treated like, like you're like, like theater. Because they do breaks like the, like an intermission, yeah. like theater, where they go, all right, that was half the show. You guys stop. Go get something to drink. We'll come back to the second half. It ruins the show. But it yeah. Yeah. I, hate, yeah. I hate that. It I ruins the show. It's it's awful. Yeah. For stand up, that is like, yeah. we had a it's momentum. It's like having to put the condom on. That yeah. really is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it sucks, but they think it's great. They're like, oh, it's like theater. And you go, this ruins everything. Yeah, we're, we're, we're flowing here. Yeah. Sometimes they do multiple act breaks, which yeah. is the worst, but. Yeah, over, I try to leave to go overseas at least. Sick man. And then, how's the podcast going? Sick oh, the podcast, podcast is great. Um, like I said, we're second year um, putting out different types of content. Um, so you do like a? Because I've only seen the clips. Like it's all on the street. Do you do like a? Do you have like a studio that you record in, or is it? Always we recorded on the just the same as you guys, like in Steven's room. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the the clips still on the street. That's what we put up mostly on Instagram. Yeah. And um, but we're trying to figure out exactly w- what more do we want to focus on? Like, do we want to do it just like this, or do we want to make it more like YouTube centered? Mm. If that makes sense, like, and it, because what's the the like the throughput of it? It's about money. It's about the economy. It's just like you know we're trying to talk about what what money is, how important it is into our lives, and you know trying to make fun of that. Versus, like, you know, when people say, how much should a man make a year? Or how much is this? Yeah, yeah. And how much is that? Like, I can yeah. see the visual being pretty uh, powerful and something like that. Yeah. If you, if you were leaned into YouTube, if you had, like, the capabilities of adding, yeah, we you just, know, visuals to, like, talking about money, I think that's, like, a... But make it fun. lighthearted, fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but, yeah, I mean, yeah. but as opposed to just being a sitting oh, yeah. around yeah. audio scenario, I could see yeah. what you're saying about being more YouTube... Would you mean more like a daily show kind of thing where you're cutting the like clips and stuff? Anything about yeah. money, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. I've seen it's yeah. I think because I have a two year old, we'll wrap up here in a second. But I think having a two year old, I'm seeing that in our like our fabric of when we're how we're taught. You know, like when you're seeing visuals, yeah, you tend to learn more and you're 100%. far more interested. 100%. And that works even for adults. Right. So if you're doing a show, a funny show about money, mm-hmm. and you're able to do like animation with something with money or something quick or a sound effect like all that shit makes people addicted to the show yeah yeah, because money you can do that with because you could do like this burrito cost me two dollars yeah this this train you know the train cost me 2.99 and then like shitting my pants on the train like you can do yeah, like, like all, i mean now that's a built-in to, bit it's like a sesame street kind of thing yeah even. yeah like what you would see animations like that yeah for yeah. a show like that it'd be Pop fucking that in there yeah and it's just all with like strippers <laughs> Listen, I want to say something. Strippers are some of the best people. They're great. I've Love. ever met in my life. Love. Great. Yeah. With, and a lot of them are really good with money. They, yeah. Honestly, listen to strippers if they if they have it financial advice. Like the the girl in there that's like hustling, and you can tell like she's not bullshitting. Ask her how many properties she's had. She probably has like passive income. She probably Airbnbs a fucking property. Like she knows what's up. Got an OnlyFans. On, yeah, on, the, kind of on the flip side of that, yeah. if you find one that's got a screenplay. She's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> you can pick She's your poison, my friend. <laughs> you yeah, can go tell to me the all about your hell. screenplay. We're going to have a good time. That's Plug a red flag. <laughs> oh, it's the red. Yeah, that's a red flag. I'm colorblind, yeah. and I can see that one from a mile away, dude. Alex, plug where yeah. you're at. Uh, yeah, I'll be at Live at the End every Friday, every Saturday, Sesh Comedy. Um, but you can follow me at Alex Payne Comedy on everything. Awesome. Uh, JoshAcardo.com. At Josh Ricardo this Friday, May tenth. It's gonna that week, right? Probably May whatever. 10th. Friday, May tenth. We're gonna do our live podcast at Megaton Brewery. Start at seven p.m. and then two shows Saturday, May eleventh, uh, seven thirty and nine thirty. 
Uh, so buy your tickets at joshricardo.com. Get those tickets and then follow me at uh, Instagram, Ed McGowan Comedy, and go to edmcgowan.com and see my tour dates. What's up? I forgot one thing. This guy's going to kill. I'm making a cartoon. It's coming oh, awesome. out in June. Oh, dude. I forgot. We're doing the premiere at Gamma. So if anybody wants to go see this cartoon, if you have great. that on your What's your the name social? of the cartoon? Metropolitans. Cool. And uh, yeah, it's a cartoon about a bunch of us living in. You remember what you used to do, Uninspired? Did you ever remember when I used to do that yeah, web series Uninspired? Uninspired? Yeah, 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 it's like a new iteration of that, is it but with that animated. Guy? Yeah. Oh, because he's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I forget what his name that. is, but Matthew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Matthew. Yeah, yeah. So we're doing the premiere for that June eighth. Awesome. Or June eighth. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and if you have uh, any questions, any thoughts, if you've ever sold uh, Obama phones, email us. <laughs> yeah, email us at working, us phone. Cl- working class comedians at gmail.com. We'll see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at working class holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in working class holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.